Amen. You may be seated. Oh, my. Yes. Mm. I was thinking a while ago how much I fit in my spirit. I just fit in this house and feel so at home. And I kind of had to smile because I've always thought about, you know, I love all forms of worship. And I mean that. I love them all. If they have Jesus at the center of it and their heart is toward God in the purity of worship, I don't care how they worship. I can worship quiet with the quiet ones. I can worship whatever way. It doesn't matter to me if that's how, if it's coming from their heart. But I've always thought in heaven, there was probably going to be this little loud section over there (laughs) of all the kinds of worshipers. There's going to be a little rumble over there with these group of people. You're going to hear the shouting, the clapping. You're going to look up. There's going to be a little wild, just a little dancing. And people are going to say, where is that coming from? They're going to say, it's fresh start in the ramp. They're all, they, they take that whole corner right in front of the throne. That's their favorite place to be, right in front of the throne. So that's where you always hear that sound coming from. We're just practicing for heaven. If anybody wants to know what's happening here, just getting ready because we believe it's just ahead of us. Oh, hallelujah. I'm not going to wait till I get there. I'm saying I'm going to start right now. Why should we wait? Why should we wait when we can have heaven on earth? Come on. And in this room this morning, heaven is kissing this place. And I love it. And heaven doesn't feel so far away at Fresh Start Church. And I love that. One time the Lord told me when this battle, he told me through a dream and told me through a prophetic word during that season, when this battle is over, you'll wear a crown. I knew then I've won the victory. It was horrible. The situation was unthinkable at this point unthinkable. But I knew God had said, when this is over, you got the crown. So you know what I did? I started praying with a crown on my head. I had a crown I won when I was 10 years old at Church God of Prophecy Youth Camp when I was queen of camp. Only time I ever won it. I didn't get Miss America, but I was queen of Church God of Prophecy Camp. And I had that crown. And buddy, I wore that crown. When I prayed, I'd get my, my crown on. It looks a little worn. It's 50 years old now. And I would put that crown on my head just to put, just to let, not only to remind me, but to let the devil know if he could see me praying. When this battle's over, I have the crown. Come on. When this thing's done, I've won this battle. Just so you know, devil, if you have to look at me when I'm praying, this is the last thing I will tell you. I am done. When I remember sometimes when I was praying for her, there was one time that it was the first time it happened, then it happened, I don't know how many times afterwards. I was in the mom mill house where I was the first time it happened, and I was praying for her. And I was in there that day alone. Pam often prayed with me. But I was praying, and I went into a vision as I was walking the floor of that mill house. And I was just praying and praying. Suddenly, I go into this vision, and I'm in a desert. I have no, There's not a tree in sight. There is nothing. There's absolute, complete desert. And in front of me, I'm looking at a concentration camp building. It was like this long cement, long oblong kind of building with no window. There was a front door in the very front of it, and to the right of the door was uh, standing or sometimes sitting this huge demonic being. And I could see him, and the only way I knew to describe him is kind of look like one of the orcs on Lord of the Rings or something, you know, it was one of those awful looking creatures. And he was standing there guarding that door. And I'm looking at this thing thinking, what am I seeing? And then it was though I could see through the walls, and I could see into the building, I could see Lindsay, and she was sitting like in a cell, and and she was being held captive in this place of deception, of deception. It was unbelievable deception she was in. And so I'm looking at her, and I could see her sitting in a chair with these demonic spirits tormenting. They were tormenting her mind. 
And when I looked at this, I remembered what Jesus did when he met with the enemy himself, Lucifer himself. He quoted the word. So I took out a promise that God had given me when the, during the time Lindsay was gone, Isaiah 49, 25. So I thought, I'm not going to, I'm not going to speak to this thing. I'm only going to quote the word. And whenever I saw the vision, I literally, and I saw it many times after that, exact same picture. I would physically walk toward the door like this, confidently. And I would walk up and I would look at that spirit and I would say, the Lord says, the captive of the warrior will be released. The plunder of the tyrant will be retrieved. For I will fight those that fight you and I will save your children. And I would just walk off. Every single time I saw it, I did the exact same thing over and over for months. One day, and this had never crossed my mind. I had never even imagined it. One day, I go into the vision. I see the building. And I see that spirit standing there. And I walked up, and I was, I was getting ready to walk toward it again like I had. All of a sudden, the door opened. And out walked Lindsay. And I was so stunned at what I was looking at. I couldn't, all I could do was just, and, and she was walking out. She was walking out. She didn't even see me standing over there. And she was walking out kind of slowly and just sort of looking straight ahead. And she was just walking out, walking out. And I was standing over here thinking, oh God, oh God, it's Lindsay. Oh God. And all of a sudden, what I had never dreamed of was all of a sudden from behind Lindsay began to be all these young people coming out behind her. There was a young man walking out. Then there was a young girl. Then there was a throng of young people that I never saw the end of. Come on. Some of them were dancing and some of them were playing instruments and all these young people pouring out of this building. And that was the day I knew why. The battle for my daughter had been so fierce. I wasn't just fighting for my daughter. I was fighting for your daughter. I was fighting for your son. Come on. Stand up on your feet all over this room, band. Would you come? That's why I came to tell you this morning. You listen to me praying, mother, praying, dad, praying, wife. One of the reasons this battle for you has been so fierce and long is because you are not just fighting for them. This thing is bigger than you are, and you felt like that a lot. The reason this thing has been so fierce is because you're not just fighting for them. You're fighting for all those that's going to be transformed by God through their testimony. When your son tells the testimony, I was on drugs, but now I'm absolutely delivered. Addiction was broken off of my life. What's going to happen? All of his addicted friends are going to come walking in behind him. Oh, come on. That's what you're fighting for. Not just about them. It's about all the others. The reason this fight for your marriage has been so hard is it's bigger than just your marriage. It's because when God restores your home, it's all the marriages that's going to be restored through your testimony. When Lazarus was raised from the dead, the Bible says the Pharisees, after he came back to life, the Pharisees didn't want to just kill Jesus. They wanted to kill Lazarus too. Why? Because all Lazarus had to do was just walk around. He didn't have to pray. He, Lazarus didn't even have to have a ministry or a pulpit. All he had to do was just walk in the room. And that was a testimony that there's a real God who raises the dead and delivers the bound. Someday, that's what you're going to do. You're just going to walk in the room and the world and your family's going to know God is real.